I'm Stephanie Hendrickson with Additive Manufacturing Media. I'm here with Eric Miller from PADT. Eric, describe PADT and how does additive manufacturing play into your business? We, we started the company uh, back 25 years ago because we were using 3D printing, um, advanced CAD, and then simulation. And combining all those three together was kind of the whole point of the company. And so simulation's been a very important part and kind of the foundation of everything we do. And so in terms of additive manufacturing, you see simulation playing a couple of different and really important roles. Mm -hmm. Uh, what are those? So the first one, which is really exciting, is this whole idea of, of optimizing the design from a shape and weight and additive uh, standpoint. So we like to call that generative design, uh, topological optimization is a subset of that. So we basically take the part in there and put loads on it and say, remove material where you can to make it as light as possible and still meet our requirements. And the second uh, thing that we do is make sure the part's gonna work. So you've done all this work, designing it, making sure it's right. Is it gonna break? Is it gonna get too hot? Is it gonna vibrate? You know, we, we, it's not just uh, physical uh, stress and vibration. It's also fluid flow. It's also electromagnetics. So we use simulation in a multi-physics way to do the whole part and make sure it's gonna work in the field and give the performance that the customer wants and optimize that performance as well. And the third way we're using it, which is very exciting for me, because I don't like scrap, because as a business owner, I don't like paying for scrap, is to model the process itself. Um, so in terms of part design verification, mm -hmm. um, what are some of the potential problems that you might discover in that stage? And then what do you do to solve those problems? Well, the biggest that we see is that you've optimized your part for the manufacturing process or using a tool like generative design for a certain load case and you've got another load case that's going to cause the part to fail. So a good example of that is a lot of these parts we're seeing uh, that come out of simulation have these like really skinny kind of organic looking long spars in them right. which are really cool. It removes a lot of weight. But what if you get a resonant frequency at the same uh, resonant frequency of that spar? So you put it on a car and the car vibrates at say, you know, 240 hertz, it's gonna vibrate and, and fail and then the part's gonna fail. Or buckling, a lot of times we're doing loads for, for uh, the, the standard cases, the worst cases, but we design these kind of spindly parts that are gonna buckle if we put a compressive load on them. So you gotta look at the whole load history, the whole mission profile of your part. So you've optimized your design, you've mm -hmm. verified your design, now you have to simulate the build. Yes. Um, what are the things that can go wrong there and, and what do you do about it? So during the build, what we really worry about is the part breaking away from the supports mm -hmm. and sticking up and hitting the blade and causing a crash. That's the biggest thing we want to avoid. And, and, and unfortunately, it's quite common. Um, the, the other problem is uh, when we take it out and we do our heat treat and we remove it from the base, it may, may still distort quite a bit. And how much of the distortion is there relative to the part that I really want from CAD? So we can predict that. And not only can we predict it, most of the tools allow us to subtract that off the original geometry. So we compensate for it. So when it's done, we can actually get the part in the shape we want. These tools are really coming along in the last couple of years. And I think people that are employing them are, being, are cutting down their iterations. Right? So even if your part doesn't crash, you still gotta scan it, find out where it's wrong, go fix the design. Why are we doing that manually? We could be doing that on the computer in a couple of days rather than, than using a machine. Right, so just in the same way that additive is kind of compressing the supply chain, mm -hmm. you're manufacturing kind of all in this one box. Mm -hmm. We could be doing our design verification right. and, and iteration in software instead of. That's exactly right, virtual prototyping. What additive allows us to do as design engineers is be very creative. It's, it's the freedom mm -hmm. to create parts without being constrained by traditional manufacturing. What simulation allows me to do is experiment uh, in a virtual environment to really be creative as well. So without going out and building and testing, I can try these crazy things that I would have never done before. Like what if I do put conformal cooling in there? I've never been able to do that before. Let's try it. Throw some passages in there, run some fluid with it, do a heat transfer analysis. That's, that's a couple hours worth of work to just get a first pass answer on it. And I can tell whether it's gonna help or not. Uh, so, so I can really be free to explore and take more risk because I can check it very easily. So it's time savings, it's creativity, but it's also just being able to make better parts and to know that they're better. Yeah, know that they're better before you get out there. Yeah.